Do you know what the Gen 6 Pokemon games were missing? A place where people can gather and interact with each other. Thankfully, the Gen 7 games fixed that by introducing Festival Plaza, an area that I'm sure is still massively populated all these years later. As you'll recall, last week I ventured into the world of Generation 6 Pokemon games on Nintendo 3DS. It was more disappointing than finding out a male Saland it doesn't evolve. After an hour searching every battle mode, I only managed to find one other person still online. But X and Y and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire are 11 and 10 years old. Age must have been the problem. I need to find a game more hip and spry who knows what the word Riz means. So I'm trying Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Moon this time around, which are only 8 and 7 years old. Sharing all that experience I learned from last week's video with myself, I'll kick things off by checking out battles in Pokemon Moon. As you can see from the guest list, a bunch of people from all over the world are still playing Pokemon Sun and Moon in 2024 while connected to Wi-Fi. It looks like the most common activities are wonder trading and using the GTS though, but if worse comes to worse, I can see if people are being truthful when they say accepting battles at any time in their bio. But that's not what we're doing right now because interacting with humans on any level makes my brain itch. No, we're going to the battle spot to hopefully beat up some children. Well, things didn't get off to a great start. Because the Pokemon Global Link was shut down in February 2020, raiding battle, online competition, and friendly competition are all useless. So that just leaves free battle. Things are a little different in Alola. Here you can only choose from three game modes, single, double, and battle royal. None of that triple or rotation battle nonsense. Then you have to choose if you want special Pokemon to be allowed or banned. This is a great idea because it further fragments the minuscule player base, making my task even more difficult. Unsurprisingly, Battle Royal Allowed failed. Then I tried Battle Royal Banned, but Lunala wasn't allowed. I'd already spent 20 minutes up to this point going through the previous owner's disappointing save file to find the best Pokemon available, and I was fed up. So I just grabbed the nearest semi-viable team and tried. That also failed. So it was on to Double Battle! Yes, I know the team isn't good. Like I said, it was slim pickings on the save file. But after 30 seconds, Damien appeared and, true to character, didn't have a Charmander on his team. The frame rate chugged more than a frat guy on Saturday night and Damien knew what they were doing and had a good team, but we got in there on the first try, baby. While I did ultimately lose, I was able to KO their Incineroar. A moral victory, yes, but a victory nonetheless. I tried double battle allowed again right after and unfortunately couldn't find anybody. Spurned by that initial success, I tried double battle banned. I secretly hoped this would fail because I didn't want to get spanked by a stranger on the internet. Thankfully, my wishes were granted and no one showed up. Moving over to single battle allowed, my first attempt failed. I tried again right after and almost immediately matched with Colin from Germany. Again though, it was somebody who knew what they were doing. But I had a legendary. There was no way I could lose. I expertly swapped out Lunala for Wishy Washy, which absorbed a hit from Typhlosion. They switched into Zerkatry, so I commanded Wishy Washy to dodge like it was the Pokemon anime and somehow took the KO. Well, they had another freaking lightning type right after an Alolan Raichu. I masterfully baited out their Zed move, said goodbye to Wishy Washy, and sent out Lilligant. They tried to confuse Lilligant, but it has own tempo. Sadly, Lilligant decided it hated me and remained paralyzed for three turns in a row. Literally one turn is all I needed to KO Raichu, but instead they were able to get the win. Lilligant, more like Lilla can't, am I right? On the bright side, Lunala likes me and finished the Raichu. So it came down to Lunala versus Typhlosion. For some reason, Lunala has a Darkinium Z, so that was useless. After a single paralysis, Lunala unleashed Moongeist Beam, did half damage to Typhlosion, and set up the end. Lunala continued to like me, launched Moongeist Beam again, and an idiot wanted a children's game against a stranger in Germany. Afterwards, I switched over to Single Battle Band and never found anybody despite multiple attempts. Whatever, I take this as a win. If you want to see me use actually good Pokemon online, don't worry, that's coming up next with Ultra Moon. Until then, let's see what's happening on the GTS. Considering that so many people in my guest list were on the GTS, it should come as no thundershock that there's still plenty of Pokemon to find at outrageous asking prices. Take Mudbray for example. Someone from Andalusia was Andalusional if they thought someone would trade a Reshiram for their level 1. 
Further down the line, though, the request became much more realistic, and I was able to trade a Glaceon for Emma's Mudbray that she raised very carefully. To help save someone from a terrible fate, I searched up Mail Salandit. There were a total of 31, many of the sellers wanting a Legendary in return. And the only acceptable trades wanted my Lunala. I'm never getting rid of the MVP. While I was looking up Female Salandit, it seemed like there were very few, Moon crashed, so I had to restart. But the male Salandit brings up a sad fact. When the servers go offline forever on April 8th, all of those Pokemon on the GTS will disappear forever. So if you have an old copy of Pokemon, check the GTS. There may just be a long lost friend still stuck in there. Since there weren't any good Pokemon on the save file, I skipped depositing anybody on the GTS and went straight to Wonder Trade. I wanted to send somebody decent, searched the PC and found a level 37 Incineroar. It took just over 20 seconds to find Astrid from France, who sent me a level 1 Komala, which is called Doduala in French. Sticking with the fully evolved starters, I sent a level 30 for Alligator, which was given to John from the UK within 25 seconds. John sent me a young goose, so I hate John and will never forgive him for this. But just like X and Y and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, Wonder Trade is still super active in Sun and Moon. I also tried to trade with someone on my guest list who said they were always accepting trades, but they declined my invitation like it was Tinder. Oh, and I tried to view global missions, but you guessed it, the global link no longer exists, so neither do they. I was unenthused about playing Moon after the disaster last week, but it's safe to say there's a few people still playing in 2024. It's still not enough to reliably find a game, but if you log on and want to battle someone in singles or doubles, there's somewhat of a chance it'll work. Now we finally arrive at our final destination, a totally legit copy of Ultra Moon where every Pokemon is level 100 and shiny and has perfect IVs. The guy in the alleyway I bought it from told me they worked at Nintendo, so it makes complete sense. Anyways, Moon was a much better success than I anticipated, but how will Ultra Moon fare? The first thing I did was head to the GTS. I wanted to entice a quick trade, so I put in a level 100 shiny Guzzlord and asked for a Magikarp. I was disappointed that I couldn't tell people my thoughts on MILFs, but Game Freak hates fun, so it makes sense. With Guzzlord safely in the digital world, I went searching for a pick-a-pack. There were a total of 83 available. It was a mixture of people asking for legendaries and some sane people asking for normal Pokemon. As I was just about to type out that I was surprised Ultra Moon hadn't crashed yet, it crashed. I also realized that I forgot to hit record, so enjoy not seeing me depositing Guzzlord. Irregardavar, I restarted my 3DS. A couple minutes later, I returned and learned that you can exclude people asking for mythical or legendary Pokemon in GTS trades. With my life easier, I gave someone in South Korea a level 30 shiny Electabuzz for their pick-a-pack. Because people don't know its final evolution is actually pronounced Vikavolt and not Vikavolt like Vmon, I decided to see what a Grubbin costs. I included Legendary and Mythicals, and it seemed like there were quite a few Grubbin available, but still far less than Pick-a-Pack. Since I didn't want my 3DS to crash again, I stopped the search and traded a level 100 shiny Cosmoome to someone in California. Just like every other Pokemon game on 3DS, the GTS and Ultra Moon has a ton of Pokemon still on it, and at least from my perspective, it did seem like there were more than X and Y and Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. With the GTS confirmed to still be quite active, except for the fact that apparently no one wanted to trade their fancy Magikarp for a shiny Guzzlord, I decided to head to Wonder Trade. I used the random number generator to choose my Pokemon, and it came out with 776 Turtonator. Someone from Japan grabbed it and sent me a level 4 Young Goose. What is with the freaking Young Goose? I mean, can you honestly name a worse Pokemon than Young Goose? Well, Bruxish, but Young Goose still sucks. The random number generator gave me 780 next, Drampa. Just like the first trade, it was gone in about 20 seconds, 40 seconds faster than Nicolas Cage. Fione from Ireland now has somebody who will fiercely protect it against bullies, and I have a level 1 Litten. For the final wonder trade, it was 354 Bennett. Raphael from Peru got it and sent me a level 1 Slowpoke. I guess if I get hungry, it'll be useful. Finally, after about 10 minutes, Guzzlord was gone and I got my Magikarp. It was a level 1 from Sunade and was apparently hatched in 2011 at Paniola Ranch. Unless they mastered space and time, that's literally impossible. Before switching to battles, I requested a link trade with Griffin, who said they're always open for trades. Well, Griffin's awesome and accepted, so I sent them a level 100 Minior. 
Their collection had a Barbarical named Piledriver, an Elekid named Zapdos, and a level 100 shiny Celebi. Ultimately, Griffin sent me that Celebi, which will be wonder traded away in the near future. Basically, what we learned this week is what we learned last week. The trading aspect of Pokemon on 3DS is still extremely popular in 2024, regardless of whether you want to use the GTS or Wonder Trade. But what about battling? I loaded up a team full of Ultra Beasts and prepared to beat up some children. Since an online battle royal has probably never happened in the history of Pokemon, I started there. Predictably, both allowed and banned failed. So I went to double battle. My first attempt in both modes failed. But I'm not a quitter. It's, it's probably why I have so many crippling addictions. Still, I decided to keep searching until I eventually found somebody. Well, on my second attempt with special Pokemon allowed, I found Ishmael from Andalusia. Not sure why I'm seeing Andalusia so much lately, but it's fine with me. Because we were both using Shinies, Ultra Moon ran at a steady 5 frames per second the whole battle. Ishmael started a Smeargle with Moody and an Incineroar. I started Naginaudle and Stakataka. Yes, I know there's no synergy there, this isn't Golden Sun. It's just a bunch of ultra-exclusive Ultra Beast Pokemon thrown together. Now, as someone known to partake in Pokemon Showdown occasionally, I gotta say, this gameplay is unbearably slow. And the lack of information is massively disappointing. Ultimately, the game was kind of boring. I managed to poison Incineroar and Azumarill, Naginatl was the MVP, and Stack Attacka managed to wake up just in time to not do enough damage to KO Incineroar. Blacephalon sucked major butt and got one shot by Azumarill, meaning it was all up to Naginatl and Zeraora. Well, my opponent was much smarter than me and switched Incineroar out at the best times to maximize Intimidate, use Spore whenever they could, and just overall knew what they were doing, causing me to lose what ended up being a 10 minute battle. God, the gameplay is so slow. With my mind unblown by that ordeal, I switched over to single battle allowed. Leland from New Jersey joined me within 20 seconds and was a fellow legendary adjacent spammer. I started Blacephalon, they started Gengar. The Freaky Clown didn't let me down this time, but unfortunately Leland used an Icy Wind and Focus Sash combo to devour the Cake Pop. So I sent out my ace, Naginatl. It's slower than Gengar, so I got hit with an Icy Wind, but Fell Stinger took the KO, sharply raising my attack. As long as I could outspeed whoever they sent my way, I'd be fine. Well, I wasn't fine, Hydreigon bodied me. But Zeraora got revenge and one-shot it with close combat. As long as they didn't send out Groudon last, I'd be fine. Well, they sent out Groudon last. It turned into Angry Groudon right away, easily tanking two close combat after the first Precipice Blades miss, winning the battle for Leland. Clearly the problem is that I'm facing people who know what they're doing, so I decided that special Pokemon were the devil and went to single battle ban. The previous owner had selected the battle team, which I assumed was good. After five minutes of searching, Azula showed up and challenged me to an Agni Kai. She started Primarina, I went with Clank. I assumed Azula would retreat, I was wrong. Primarina set up Reflect while I shifted gears. And you know what really grinds my gears? When Primarina also sets up Light Screen. Azula switched into Incineroar, which was very bad for me, so I switched into Salamence. Because I'm a pro Pokemon player. Knowing that Azula was going to switch back into Primarina, I Mega Evolved and Dragon Danced. Well, Azula did switch with U-Turn. Too afraid of the fairy, I went back to Clang. I didn't really have a choice. Or a choice belt. Also, Clang decided to suck a butt and miss Deer Grind, ultimately leading to its Delmise. Surely Excadrill would fare better, right? Well, Rock Tomb has a 95% chance of hitting, and it missed. If this was Pokemon Showdown, I'd spam hateful messages before closing the window without actually leaving the game, forcing them to wait until the timer reached zero. Mega Salamence was my last Pokemon. They predictably poisoned it with Toxic, so I Dragon Danced to set up Facade. They, uh, they protected when I Facaded. Still, I managed to one-shot Crobat the next turn, setting things up for a Mega Salamence versus Incineroar finale. Mega Salamence was definitely fast enough, so if Facade was powerful enough, I'd win. Well, it was! Incineroar went down, giving me the victory. Ultimately, if you're looking to battle online on 3DS in 2024, your best bet is in the Alola region. Even though there's still very few people actively looking to fight you, I had more consistent luck with Sun and Moon and Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. And by more consistent luck, I mean I found 3 battles in 30 minutes instead of 1 battle in 30 minutes. 
all three of which lasted about 10 minutes each because the gameplay moved slower than a slugma. Yeah, it's, it's rough out there. 